Welcome to this amazing episode of Crypto Gist. And today I have the privilege to have very good guests. It's Eran and Constantin from Bullpur. How are you, gentlemen? Thank you for coming to Crypto Gist. Hi. Amazing. Thank you for having us. All good. Thank you. I know it's hot. I know we're this, it's probably, they're saying the hottest month of the earth in 2000 years. Something Somebody's claiming this. So I see that Aaron have his uh, fan there. And Constant is probably very hot in New York. But today's is about you guys. Um, so let's start with the, the fresh question is, who is Aaron? Who is Constantine? Okay. So you, I'll, I guess I'll start. So my name is Aran Hanani, and I'm one of the co-founders of Bullperks. Prior to Bullperks, my education is, my background is computer science and math, as well as medicine. I was doing mostly real estate investments and traditional VC prior to crypto. I was doing crypto on the side since 2013, got into Bitcoin at around 100 back then, obviously gone through the cycles bought, sold, did a lot of ICOs investments. And then uh, when I met with Konstantin, we decided to launch our own new company, something nice. that will basically help the retail users, the project founders. And we came up with a launchpad. The launchpad that you were going to tell us in a bit, what is Bullper? But let's, let's go with Konstantin. Who is Konstantin? Well, first of all, to, to make it a little bit fun, I'm still discovering this, right? You know, so <laughs> <laughs> on a personal level, I am a fan of ontology. I'm, I'm, uh, I believe that we're learning who we are till the end of our days. Uh, on the professional side of things, right, you know, I, I was a trader in the commodities and futures, uh, and that's how I found Bitcoin in very early on. And then I fell in love immediately. <laughs> in 2017, I was a partner in the first crypto fund of funds, Bitbull Capital, which allowed me to uh, basically do diligence a lot of uh, hedge fund strategies and understand how they kind of shape uh, the industry. Uh, and then was part of a bigger conglomerate, Wave Financial, and uh, we uh, there was a lot of different strategies ranging from VC strategies and treasury management and even tokenizing whiskey distillery, right? Wow. Uh, and uh, long story short, then, as Ron mentioned, we met and we uh, we immediately understood that we have amazing opportunities to create business together. And uh, yeah, I guess the, the rest is history. Okay, guys. And you have a very nice name for, for the company called Bullperk. So it was... It was inspiring the inspiring the bull market. So it's not necessarily the bull market, but when we were thinking about Launchpad, you know, we we're looking at all the others that existed, and they were mostly something ending with pad or something ending with starter, and we wanted to be a little bit more unique. So we thought about it. You know, we're big bulls and fans of, you know, being bullish. So bulls. And then bulls have perks. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and also, uh, indirectly, there's an analogy for all the, the people who are fans of uh, uh, Friends as a TV show. You know, if you remember, there were like a cafe, Central Perks, right, in New York. Mm -hmm. so yeah, 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 yeah. Back in the days, Iran lived in New York, too. So that was like also like a, a, like a association, basically. Oh, that's fine. To to that's with, with the central perks. Yeah, I remember that show very well. So, guys, congratulations for being around for more than two years now. Uh, you launched over sixty projects and consistently being ranked as the top of the launch path. And then I'm there, there top one. So, tell us a little about this whole journey so far, especially now that we went bull market, bear market. Now we're there, getting there, getting back to the bull market again. Yes, hopefully. So, so yes, we launched Bull Perks officially in June 2021. Obviously, we've been working on it for almost six months before it. Um, we managed to find some good projects initially and do big multiples with them for our communities. And that basically boosted us pretty quick to, with the ranking. And then based on all our relationship, since as 
we already said, Constantine and I have been in this space for a long time from different angles, then we have a lot of connections with VCs, um, you know, founders, people in crypto space, then we've been getting amazing deal flow from the early stages. And I think that was one of our advantages that we got this, that deal flow and we managed to pick the good ones and get ranked pretty well. And the fact that the community actually liked us because we're very transparent and everything was done very professionally. Everyone is, you know, we care about KYC, about compliance, about the legal parts, in addition to due diligence. So I think that pretty much boosted us and created a lot of credibility in the space for us. When these founders speak with us, they realize that they're talking with people that's been around, done things, it's not, and you know, and do want their, you, you know, they want things for them to succeed as well as for the retail to do well. So we're not just caring about ourselves. We care about the projects, we care about the community, and we put that, both of them, before ourselves in many cases. But I'll let Constantine continue. So, so yeah, just to add to that, like the, the community was always the priority. That's why we created multiple um, uh, things just to even collect their feedback on a programmatic level, right? You know, we always try to be transparent if, you know, something is not working out, whether it's like a small technical glitch or the project, let's say, is delayed or anything like happening. We're always trying to be on top of things and protect our community. That's, I think, another important aspect that, um, you know, people appreciate really because one thing is to when the bull market is uh, you know booming and everything is amazing people are making money the excitement and there's a very different um you know mood like like in the entire space and particularly in the launch pits and niche uh where you know sometimes it's it's not that positive right you know it requires challenging questions it requires you know like answering like you know uncomfortable questions so we, we pride ourselves to have a very strong focus on uh, user experience and customer support. We created like a huge portal with like FAQ questions. We try to think every time how to onboard people, how to make it easy for them, how to make sure that the platform is also, everything is easy to use, everything is transparent. And I think that those are like small and not sexy conversations, like, you know, like, but like people, when they see we care about those things, like, you know, they appreciate it eventually, right? Because we tend to kind of uh, nurture the, the vision, right? Overall vision, not only of the community of speculators who just like come to and buy the token. And then when this distribution comes, they sell the token. We try to also promote like the long-term vision more like a, v, a real VC vision of five to 10 years. Um, only time will show if we're successful with this, right? but we, we're doing our best. Yes. We actually, like Konstantin said, we actually put a lot of attention to the education part. We create constantly content and videos to teach them, whether it's how to use different wallets, about the investments, the differentiations between, you know, v, an actual VC and a distributed VC, I mean, so yes, we, keep, we, we spend a lot of time and energy on the education part. And like you said, I mean, we also care about the innovation. We always keep on trying to find new products and bring them more products, incorporate more chains. Every time there's a new chain coming out, we try to, you know, incorporate it in our systems so we can be as wide as possible and be able to support projects from different ecosystem and not just a specific, you know, ecosystem. So that way we can offer more, more variety and better quality of projects. More variety and better quality of projects, guys. So look, in crypto G's, I have something that we came across is how you recognize a crypto G is like some, some people like you guys, Aaron Constantine, you care more about the community than yourself. So that's a proper crypto G. You have survived more than three bear markets. So you have done it. Um, education is very important. So the main reason we create crypto G is to invite people like you guys that have been in the industry long time. and know the most important part is getting the right message to the audience. 
Now, you mentioned education, awareness, and also innovation. But looking at your success, what do you think are the three most important features of a launchpad? Yeah, that's so, it. Uh, of a launchpad? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You want to start, Aaron? Well, I would say the keys to success for us is transparency, putting the community first, but and caring about the projects we launch as well. Because one of the problems we've noticed recently in the space is that, you know, there's been a lot of this issue of refund policies, for example, mm -hmm. that people pull the trigger too fast. And you see situation that a project and founders and a team that worked for a year or more, building a product, doing everything they can And then they come to the launch. And unfortunately, you know, it doesn't do as well as people want. Mm. But it doesn't mean that the project is a scam. It doesn't mean that it won't be successful long term. And the problem is that, you know, a lot of these launch pads have a policy that they just do a quick refund and okay, whatever. And that hurts the project a lot. Mm. So we, for example, try to do it as a last resort. We'll try to find other creative ways, you know, to maybe make it for the community, support the project, maybe to help them figure solutions. So we don't pull the trigger fast. We're usually the last ones to do the refunds. And sometimes that might hurt us because people are, you know, a very short term in the, in the or short, very short span of attention in the space. But they need to understand that behind the project and behind the, the refunds, there's people that sweat and worked for a long, long time. And doing this refund can destroy an entire project. Yeah. And just to add to this, like just to give analogy with traditional finance, if somebody's listening from traditional finance, uh, you know, the every every project like ours, right, you know, uh, if I would provide a comparison like you know the investment banking like world where they prepare projects to pre-ipo because ido if you think about it that's equivalent to to public markets right you go to an exchange it's a publicly traded then the market provides the the answer whether the project is great or not right so the market dictates you what's going to happen next so you're already like you did all your job and you just sit back and watch now the question is like you know what happens before and not many people actually realize that there's a tremendous as Ron mentioned that projects are doing huge like preparation but we're also doing a tremendous job because in any business like ours you need to be good at uh, sourcing so origination sourcing the deals due diligence in them making sure that you know you may you you know who are the founders right they're not scammers that didn't do they're not trying to do rock pools <laughs> you're making sure that the technology is actually innovative and they're solving some problem right you're, you're almost like going through a journey of entire v, full-fledged vc due diligence right with a lot of questions in between look at their financials look at their their like go to marketing strategy and etc cetera, etc cetera. so all this preparation behind the scene nobody sees that It's kind of like, you know, this is, again, the less, the least, like, interesting part for the users. The users only come and see, okay, well, announcement about the launch. Let's see what the project is doing. Mm -hmm. So I think what Iran mentioned is vitally important that people would just understand that there's, there's a lot of uh, components to this, a lot of work being done behind the scenes from all the, like, participants, whether it's the market makers, exchanges, launch pads, Uh, and the projects themselves and just respect that this is really hard work and we are doing our best to deliver right so thank you Constantine thank you Aaron and um, something that got my attention and I just was thinking this is th you are actually the first we have VCs in the show we have central exchange decentralized exchange layer one layer two developers content creators but this is the first time that uh, we have a launchpad on the show um, I constantly get a lot of people asking me either they're raising money or they are willing to invest money, right? From both sides. So some project they want to raise money, say, Andre, do you know any launch path, et cetera, that you can help me to introduce? So maybe for somebody that's launching the project or they're uh, raising capital or they want to get into a launch path, 
from you guys, what do you look for in a project before running the launch part round for it or even funding it? Like, you know, it was how does Bullpark select the project to be featured on the platform and what criteria do you use to evaluate their potential for success? So at current market, we usually look for traction. You know, in the previous markets, you it was enough that you had an idea, a white paper, mm -hmm. you just and you just launched and you would make money. This is a different market. I mean, the markets have matured, like in any market, you know. With time, it becomes more mature and it becomes higher bar to enter. So at this point, we want to see traction. Now, the traction can be whether you have revenues, whether you have users, whether you have a product that is already finished or close to finish. So traction is very important. Obviously, we'll look at your cap table. We want to see who your investors. We want to see how much you raised to make sure that you have the runway. So it's not like you're going to launch the token and two months later you run out of funds and you shut down. So we need to look at cap table and your financials. Um, obviously, we're looking at the team. Super important, the team. We look at... First of all, we want them to be public. We want to see what they've done before, if they have experience in launching companies, in, and in specific, if they have experience in web-free crypto, whether it's from aspects of trading or whether they were part of teams in the crypto space before. But we want to see, because the problem is just coming from a web tool or a traditional world, you can be very smart, but we've seen it time again and again if you don't know the space, you're probably not going to make it in the space. You need to understand the space. This, this space, unlike the regular world where people will give you time before they analyze you or criticize you, here, people just looking to say that it's a scam or a rug pull. So you need to do everything to show them it's otherwise. You need to know that you need to create content constantly, make announcements, partnerships. So we're looking at, you know, that kind of experience and knowledge in, of the space. I mean, obviously, we analyze the token metrics. We want to make sure that it's sustainable long term and it makes sense. We want to see you know, that the team is committed, advisors are committed. So it's a it's a... It's a long process of due diligence. We're looking at multiple criteria, but these are some of the key ones, and I'll let Constantine add on that. Yeah, I mean, obviously, it also really depends on which particular project we're talking about, like on the particular niche. Just what, it's uh, just to add, like, you know, if we, go, we, we can go to nitty gritty, like of uh, somebody's launching AMM, right, you know, or a layer one or a gaming project. Those are three different uh, aspects what we're gonna look at, right? So the the traditional one, like just looking at the team and the previous background, the financials, the traction, et cetera, they're, they might not change dramatically, right? Uh, but like the, the details, like, you know, the devil is in details, right? You know, whether this particular team has experience in, let's say in gaming, right? If they're launching a gaming project or if they're launching and automated market maker, like whether they have some maybe previous trade fi experience and they work with some shops that actually allow them to have this act this particular type of expertise, right? So from there, you, as Aaron mentioned, the tokenomics and then utility, obviously, because we, well, I think it's important to remind people that all the launch pads are launching utility tokens, right? So we're not talking about securities. And the key word of utility token is actually to have a, a good utility. And not one. Ideally, it should be multiple so to incentivize people to actually buy or somehow participate in the ecosystem by either staking the to token or maybe like just farming, get some rewards or like, you know, just using it somehow so that it's not just like one time event. You launch the project, there's a pump and dump of 5x or whatever, and then they forget about it. There's actually a, a perpetual interest in the project and people are actually excited and they see a clear evidence that this makes sense and to say honestly like you know that it's it's very rare that people can balance all those components meaning the tech the financial the marketing expertise and also be able to 
to do the, the, the proper tokenomics. So that, therefore, where we see gaps, we come in and we try to help to fix it. Yeah, and to add to, to, add to that, so obviously the go-to-market is super important. We, want to, we try to understand their plan for the future and what kind of partnership they're going to have and stuff like that. Um, and like Constantine said, regarding the utility, super important because you want to have adoption. I mean, so w you need to think, why would someone buy your token? And in the past, it was enough to say staking or governance, <laughs> which is the usual answers. That's not enough anymore. We need other utility. We need a reason why people will use it or how the supply will be going down. So that's another option that we're looking at. So yes, there's, you know, we also obviously look at what exchanges they're going to launch in. So there's a lot of different factors that come into play. Perfect. Uh I hope everybody's taking some notes. What, for example, a launch path like Bullpress is looking for when, at the time that they want to put interest on your project. Um, so, and this is also very important. You mentioned, guys, is the team. So the team is very important of any project. And um, Aaron, you mentioned like they have to be showing their faces, right? Because so many people don't show their faces. So that's very important. And also, Aaron mentioned something that this the Awareness has to be there. You're not know, creating content, doing partnership. That's very important. Also, utilization. If there's no utilization, how it's going to escalate the project in the future if nobody's utilizing, utilizing the product? But talking again about teams, um, they say it's no matter of time. It's a matter of team, right? Like, you have a good team, you can get the most of a good project. But let's talk about a little bit of about Bullpress uh, team. Where is the team based at? Who is the team? Because we see... Constantine and Aaron, but obviously this requires a lot of team effort to put good projects like you are putting together. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we 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 obviously like uh, rely on people, right? Any project, if you think about it, that comprises of the the this collective wisdom and the like of team efforts, right? So when people say like I did something on my own. That's definitely not true, right? So we have fifty plus team members across the world. Uh, probably like 12 different countries, you know, like um, uh, mostly in probably in, like in Europe and then a um, uh, mix of uh, Middle East, South Asia, right? Um, I'm kind of uh, Latin America. Um, I'm kind of uh, alone here in the US. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, we, 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 we found the way. It's also very interesting because we launched, you know, like right after like, you know, like pandemic, right? And and that was like um, uh, that was already common thing to do, right? You know that uh, people don't have to sit in the office, like it's very result oriented. And we still we still I think we do our best to maintain family atmosphere inside, like the team and all our chats. And uh, we have amazing people we work with, ranging from you know the marketing department with the content creators, designers, videographers, and uh, uh, social media experts uh, to developers, uh, so uh, software developers and project managers and uh, business developers, like people who specialize on just uh, uh, maintaining the distribution, right? You know, which is a separate uh, important task, right? Um, yeah, and we we just we're 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 lucky because besides that, like you know, we have our community who are like. If you think about it, after the, the reason why we're also like really really blessed because. If something happens, right, you know, like in, we have closed chats with our top tier investors and they actually provide us like it's almost like an outsource, like quality assurance on multiple levels. Right. You know, so they always give you a very honest feedback and pinpoint whether you have a bug or something is not working, whether you promise to to list on this time. And then so it's the community is driving us to become better. So it's not only like inside the team, we have it outside pressure as well which actually works pretty in a in a in a congruent con confluence like you know and you know i i think it's so far working well yeah okay. like our sixth player if you're talking about basketball or like the 12th one in soccer so they're the extra 
And yes, we might be the captains, but a ship can't work without a whole team. So it's true. It's true. Um, I'm talking about the where the, the where is the world going right now? We have very let's say different month in crypto, July 2023. It changed a lot of stuff recently. So, but what where do you think the future of crypto is heading to? And when do you speak? expect a massive decentralized environment to kick in. So especially what happened two weeks ago, where do you think the crypto world is going in the next six months, one year, two years? I'll let Constantine start because I have a little bit different views from <laughs> both. And which is another beautiful thing. Like we, we allow in, in our team to have different views and that's how we enrich ourselves to try to learn from different perspectives. I mean, the, the short answer, I do believe after happening, we're going to start to go run. So, um, so I apologize. It's okay. Yeah. Um, nah, it's actually Sylvia. Hey, <laughs> 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 Sylvia, we're live here. <laughs> Um, okay. yeah. But uh, long story short, like, you know, after happening, I do believe like, you know, and uh, it, we're going to start a new bull run. So 2024, uh, that's that's when we're going to see a very, very positive vibe, although it's still going to it might take time. Like I, I to be conservative, it's still like right now, uh, the overall economic, we're not like a separate, uh, you know, niche in the financial markets. The overall markets are not doing well. You can see what's happening in the U.S. with mm -hmm. interest rates. You can see overall the, the dynamics of the world, which is very polarized, unfortunately, right? So crypto is not a bubble. It's not in a vacuum. Like, you know, it's also very, like, highly impacted by this, right? So I think once this, uh, the general economics uh, atmosphere will change, you know, and we have some more positive news inside the industry, that will be the precursor of the new bull run. Yeah. Aaron? So in that sense, I also think that we're heading to the bull run and actually maybe even before the halving because obviously people already going to be aware of the halving. So they're going to start accumulating and expecting the jump. So I think it will happen even earlier. I think maybe even quarter one of next year. But um, regarding the decentralization, the way it used to work in the past is was crypto was for enthusiasts only. So you, me, you know, we would invest in a token. It would maybe do big multiples, maybe crash. But a lot of institutional money came in. Wall Street money, institutional money is coming in. And right now, they're dictating a lot of it. So while we're saying decentralized, the decentralized is more about the opportunity to participate in things, the, the opportunity to swap money or send money from anywhere with low fees and stuff like that. But mm -hmm. it's not as decentralized because if you're looking who controls most of the top tokens, that's actually institutional. Yeah. It's not as decentralized as people might think. So... Yeah. You know, I I think the opportunity lies in the new coins, in the ones that are, you know, not as big, not the top 50. That's where the opportunity lies, because the top 50, the institution are already doing that, and they won't allow huge jumps, in my opinion, because think about it. They all use market making, they all use algo trading, this, you know, they don't care about the token. It's not like they were like you and me passionate about a project, about Bitcoin or Ethereum. For them, it's a source of money. So the second it makes 10%, 20%, boom, let's cash out. We can show our investors. We made 10, 20% in one month. In a year, maybe we make 30, 40, 50%. Our investors are going to be super happy, going to give us more money. We're going to make more from the fees. So, you know, it's not as decentralized as it used to be. Yeah. And that's but, but but just to add also to this in terms of institutions yeah. really really quickly i think it's important what we what we faced recently like because the, the entire industry is still young 14 years old and we, but there is an important thing that happened that 
Bitcoin, for example, as a golden standard of crypto, uh, it passed like the, the mark of 10 years. So I don't know if uh, people like who are listening to you know this from traditional portfolio strategy. Uh, Bitcoin already uh, uh, been nominated as the best asset class like in the past, like in the last 10 years. So that means that the CIOs of all those like huge institutions, they cannot ignore it. If they ignore it, if they don't put at least like a small portion, at least 1% in the best asset class, they will lose their jobs because it's like it's they cannot anymore, right? So what's happening, this transition and education of the huge conglomerates of the institutions of the, across the world, not only in the United States. Um, so they're slowly getting into because they have to put it like at least try and to see what's happening. One percent, half a percent, but they're testing the waters. I remember, you know, a few years ago, actually quite a few years ago, I tried to go to a family office and convince them to let's do investments in crypto and Bitcoin. And they were like, what? <laughs> Going to go to zero. I mean, yeah. Let's focus on the real estate. <laughs> you know the return, easy. You know, and then you hear after many years, suddenly a few years ago, you, you see the, or in the last year or two, suddenly, oh yeah, we have a portfolio now of crypto. We diversify this, that, and you're like, hmm, okay, interesting. Yeah. I told you a few years ago, 10 years ago. I told you so. Um, I'm talking about I told you so, guys. Obviously, you have been very successful with Bull Perks and the Launch Pack. But can you share some success story of projects that have been benefited from being part of Bull Perks? Sure. I mean, you know, without going to specific details of the names of projects, but obviously part of what we bring to the table is the marketing, so we help build communities. We connected them to top exchanges to get listed. We got the top KOLs. I mean, we help with certain partnerships. So each project is a little different what we bring to them, because as Constantine mentioned, you know, we assess the project as a whole and we see where the weakness and then we try to bring value where they're weak and strengthen them. Yeah. And, and also in addition, like, uh, so certain selected projects, right? And we also help them even to introduce to investors, the top tier VCs, because uh, we know their criteria and we clearly understand like how they're looking at the market. And realistically, there's not many uh, projects that are actually are even eligible to be introduced to tier one VCs, right? So therefore, we're very careful in this, you know, in this approach. But what we're trying to do, we're still trying to, uh, if they need help, like, you know, to see if we, if we can assist with maybe some other like potential communities and investors, because there's multiple ways how you can raise money in crypto nowadays. Uh, and therefore, I think that's one of the most vital things, right? You know, as projects needs help with this. Uh, obviously, having said that, like as Ron mentioned, is marketing and other things, but also sometimes our one of the best help is actually saving them from like crazy mistakes. Uh, there is a metaphor we're trying to use all the time during the launch. When you go to IDO, it's like again public market. It's almost, it's a very, um, very similar to birth of a baby. You cannot undo it. That's all. You're out. <laughs> There's no going back. So, so if you miscalculate certain risks, and there's multiple risks that can go wrong, right? You know, ranging from smart contract and security to uh, poor market making strategy or not negotiating the fair terms with your partners, right? So you do one single mistake, uh, it will cost you the entire project. So our job is also to also assess and protect them and to make sure that we, we remove all, all possible risks and then to the best of our ability. And, some, and sometimes, you know, even help with projects after. First of all, we keep supporting them. And sometimes you have to, if they did something wrong, you know, you try to help them and support them to fix it. Do damage control sometimes. Damage control. Very important. And um, okay, so 
as Constantine made, once you launch a project, there's no way back, like when you had a child. But let's let's talk about the future. Let's say that like you have a new child right now and you have to think about the future. So what's on the horizon for Bullpress? Like any exciting futures of grace or partnerships that the, the community can look forward? Sure, a lot. I mean, as Iran mentioned, for, first of all, we, we recently introduced uh, some of the new products. Uh, so we have a right now in, uh, integration with swap and bridge functionality, uh, mm -hmm. which is, has 400 coins and more than uh, 14 chains. You know, so now uh, it's an additional utility to our ecosystem. And there was a, there's a lot of people who demand it. You know, they have stable coins that say BUSD. They need to simply swap it to USDT, right? You know, so now they can do it on our platform okay. uh, we're looking to introduce more um so to speak yield farming and more like uh, so uh, i hate this word but like it's more common to explain like passive investments you know like product <laughs> right something that will provide the apy in stable coins uh we have several strategies that we can introduce soon like which will help people to also make money even regardless if there is like an, an IDO this month or there's not, right? So we're constantly thinking how to uh, benefit our community, introduce products that will actually, you know, uh, on a long run, provide them value proposition. Yes, and it's not just the products that we're offering, but it's also more token utilities. So more things that you benefit by being a token holder. So we're looking at, as Constantine said, different Tool, different tools. Um, we're looking also analytical stuff. So we're obviously going to list on topic, on, I'm not going to say topic changes, but we have plans to list on more exchanges. Um, obviously, right now might not be the perfect time due to the market, but you know, we're constantly in conversations, we're constantly monitoring. We could planning to do multiple partnerships, multiple marketing campaigns. We're doing, a, you know, different reward programs. We have, we just spoke about one of them. If Constantine, you want to tell more about it, for example. Yeah, ambassador program, one of them is like, so we, we realized there's a lot of micro influencers. So amazing people who are like dedicated, dedicated all their life to crypto and they start small. They only have like a few thousand people following. And obviously, because of that, they're not making money. That's not their full-time job. They have to support their family somehow. So, but they're passionate. So we realize that we want to help them, right? We want to promote them. We want to make sure that they're also like, you know, uh, compensated properly for, for the effort. So we, so what we're going to do soon, we're going to introduce ambassador program with people who are going to participate in the, um, you know, if they're loyal to our community, we're going to feature them. We're going to create multiple events as, you know, mm -hmm. similar to what we do with you, live sessions, but all together, we're going to create AIM Twitter spaces. We're going to feature them on our website to make sure that people who truly believe in the space and actually help us and been with us since the inception, we also want to, you know, help them to grow. And that provides two things. One, it's it's a win-win cross-marketing promotion and also uh it's an amazing opportunity to get to some of the uh perks of the of our launch pads you know faster than anyone else you know oh, yeah and we also right now we're focused on our incubation so that's part of what we've been building so that way we looking for projects that have something exceptional and then strengthen them in all angles to be able to launch them to the market at the best time possible. Um, we're talking about the three to four months programs. We usually find projects that are that have traction, for example, in Web2, and we bring them into Web3. So they have some traction already. They have some revenues, but we help them build communities the marketing channels, they go to market, we educate them about the crypto space, we make sure that they have the right team members. So I want to process that's a three to four months to hopefully prepare them as best as possible. So those together with obviously other strong ideals, hopefully will continue our success as a launch pad. 
Amazing. Guys, we're nearly wrapping up, but before I forget, something that you did very good as a bull perks is that you pick up a very good name, but also it was a open username on Instagram and Twitter. So I normally ask how they can find you, but I'm going to help you guys. It's at, at bull perks on Twitter, on Instagram, but also in Telegram is bull perks announcement. So if you want to contact the team of bull perks, that's the best way that you can do it. Either if you are raising capital, you need a launch pad, or if you are a content creator, you're getting it started, want to connect with the Bullpers team, that's the best way to do it. Because from, from my side, for example, I have worked work with projects that are inside the Bullpers launchpad, and it has been very good as a content creator. The team is very professional, and also they uh, value a good content creator. So if you're a content creator, you're watching this, go and, go and reach out the team of Bullpers. And... For the new generation, guys, so people that are just getting started or anybody that's building this space, either if they are in the, into developing or they're into finance or VCs or Launchpad or content creator or traders, what is the best advice that you will give them for, to anybody that's just getting started into Web3, crypto, blockchain, etc.? Do your own research. That's always <laughs> the number one. I mean... Don't buy into hypes. Don't, necess don't necessarily listen to what other people think or say. Check, verify, do your own research. Because in the end of the day, if you're using your own money, you, you need to take accountability. You can't afterwards run and say, oh, but he told me. No, do your research. Make sure you know what you're doing. Make sure you invest only what you can afford to lose. And hopefully you just do well. <laughs> yeah. And then from my side, I would say invest in yourself. That's the most uh, valuable investments, right? In your, in your capacity to analyze in critical thinking and like, uh, and, you know, just, just, just see certain patterns where successful people like, you know, the Q Andres and the others, like, you know, who are just like started also like yourself from, from nothing, you know, like, and the, and somehow, uh, it's doable, right? You can see practical examples of honest people who who I think you through like the time is also like a very important factor. When you see that people for multiple years mm. consistently delivering uh, whether it's a product, whether it's content or and they're like they're honest, they haven't scammed anyone, that should be one of the first things you have to uh, notice, right? You know once you're like doing your own due diligence. I have a good friend in Mexico. His name is Jorge Serratos. And he has this in Spanish. He said, you you, the repetition is your reputation. He said, you, tu reputación es tu repetición. It sounds nicer in Spanish, but that's the message. And I believe something that you are doing, guys, with Blue Press is that you are constantly bringing good products, having a great launch, and also the team is very um, constant and you guys have been the first launch that I've been in the show, but I'm very happy and excited to have you here. And I hope looking forward to the future with you guys. And I hope that everybody has watched or listened to this uh, podcast can get connected with Constantine or Iran or anybody from the Bulk Press team. So guys, thank you so much for coming to the show. I hope you enjoy your summer holidays. I know there's no holidays in Web3, but at least you get a better weather, guys. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you very much for having us. Thank you, Andres. Bye-bye.